Hi, my name is Commander Don Graham from the Office of Operations. Recently, the department published a Chief of Police notice that significantly changes the way we handle the property of persons that we arrest. Historically, officers booked every item of property that was within the arrestee's control for safekeeping to prevent that property from being stolen or vandalized. This approach was well-intentioned and consistent with our core values. Recently, the city was sued in Mitchell versus the city of Los Angeles. The plaintiffs in Mitchell, who were individuals experiencing homelessness, alleged that either through cleanups or enforcement actions such as arrests, their personal property was being taken and either destroyed or stored in a way that made it nearly impossible to get back. As part of that case, the court clarified that there are only certain circumstances where officers may legally take possession of an arrestee's property when they make a custodial arrest. The city then included those circumstances within the settlement agreement with the plaintiffs. Now, it's important to understand that while this legal settlement involved the homeless population, the principles that we are about to discuss apply equally to all individuals that are arrested by the LAPD. We're now gonna review the circumstances justifying taking possession of an arrestee's property. Officers should think of taking property belonging to an arrestee at the time of the arrest as a Fourth Amendment seizure because the same legal principles that we were taught surrounding search and seizure laws apply to that property. In the same way that an officer needs legal justification to arrest someone or conduct a search, think back to your SPICE acronym, similar legal justification is needed to seize their property. First, any evidence or contraband, such as drugs or weapons, that an officer lawfully observes through an exception to the Fourth Amendment warrant requirement, including, but not limited to, the Plain View Doctrine, consent to search, and search incident to arrest, can and should be seized and booked as evidence. Concerning searches incident to an arrest prior to booking, such searches of the person are permitted without probable cause or reasonable suspicion. Any property seized during a search incident to arrest can be legally seized and, per department policy, shall be booked as either evidence or into the arrestee's property. Simply put, officers must book everything that is on the arrestee's person, including any jewelry worn by the arrestee, everything in their pockets, wallets, and money. What about the arrestee's personal belongings that are not on their person? As I said earlier, this personal property cannot be seized unless the seizure is justified under the Fourth Amendment. This means whether the seizure is made pursuant to a warrant or an exception to the warrant requirement applies. Frequently, an arrestee will give consent to have his or her personal belongings taken by officers. Consent is a legal basis to seize property. Any property that is not on an arrestee's person at the time of arrest will either require consent from the arrestee or some other legal justification to seize and book that property. Even though consent provides a legal justification for an officer to take an arrestee's personal property, officers are not required to take everything that an arrestee asks them to, even with their consent or permission. That said, there are certain types of property that are more necessary for a person to have for use once they are released from detention. If either requested by an arrestee or when consent is obtained and where the officer can reasonably access it. An officer may seize and book the following. Money, prescription medications, identification, other important paperwork, or other items that can be fit inside an arrestee's property bag. Or medical equipment such as a wheelchair, walker, or cane that cannot fit inside a personal property bag. When requested by an arrestee, officers may book items other than those we mentioned, but officers are not required to do so. In either case, if an officer is going to seize personal belongings of an arrestee, based on consent or an express request from the arrestee, it is important to capture the arrestee's consent or request to take their property on body worn or digital in-car video, and also document the consent or request in the arrest report. The last occasion when officers may take and book an arrestee's personal property 
that falls under the community care doctrine. Under the community care doctrine, an officer may seize personal property from an arrestee that creates a threat to public safety. This includes where property creates a hazard, for example, it could cause an accident if left in the street, blocks public right-of-way by leaving less than 36 inches to pass, blocks access required under the American Disabilities Act, or blocks lawful access to a public street, sidewalk, building, or loading dock. If an officer seizes an arrestee's personal property under the community caretaking doctrine, the officers will be required to provide all of the facts and circumstances supporting why the particular items of personal property posed a risk to public safety. This shall be documented in your arrest report. So to review, officers shall book an arrestee's personal property when it is evidence of a crime or contraband or it is on the arrestee's person at the time of arrest. Officers shall book the following items if and only if the seizure is either consented to by an arrestee or where the arrestee requests such items to be taken. These items are essential items such as ID, money, or medications which fit in a property bag or medical equipment such as a wheelchair, walker, or cane. Officers may book other personal property of an arrestee when it is practicable, meaning the officer can reasonably get to it, but only if requested by the arrestee or it is creating a public safety hazard under the community caretaking doctrine. Any other personal property that does not fall into one of those categories shall remain at the location of arrest. When feasible, officers should allow the arrestee to make arrangements to have someone secure their property. Once officers do seize an arrestee's property, it becomes the department's responsibility to safeguard it. So department personnel shall take all appropriate steps to catalog and store the property and then either return the property or ensure that it is properly disposed of consistent with department policy. One last reminder, officers shall never book property that is contaminated by hazardous waste or vermin. Officers should use the 311 system or the MDC to contact the Bureau of Sanitation to deal with that hazard. This notice also provides directions on booking excess personal property and specific procedures for central division officers working the downtown area. Please read the entire notice for more specific details pertaining to these areas. If you have any additional questions, please contact the Office of Operations, Evaluation and Administration section. Thank you and be safe.